welcome back everyone apologies for taking little bit of extra time in uploading video of this series actually i had few personal commitments so i was busy there let's start today's video without further delaying in today's video we will learn about different types of operations at action level what i mean by that like how you can add an action how you can reorder an action and renaming of an action like uh, how you can delete how you can copy paste an action and the advanced feature of an action or many more action level settings let me show you practically click here on create We are going to create Cloudflow basics of action select manual trigger now to add an action what you have to do is you can click on this button and you will have all the available options all the actions you can search any specific action from here and you can select by navigating in the tabs as well let's say if you are looking for an action related to sharepoint you can search here and all the sharepoint related action you can see under the sharepoint head something like this let's say if you are looking to uh, send an email so you are looking for an email action so you can search it here send email all the action related to email you can see here and you can select it any action as per your requirement and pass in the required information like this subject test body test so something like this now how you can a reorder an action let's say you have a certain actions let me add one more get item so let's say you have certain actions and you want to reorder them then what is the process how you can reorder them simply click and drag and drop wherever you would like to place it something like this this is how it is easy in power automate to reorder an actions now how you can rename an action to rename an action what you have to do is click here and there is an option of renaming you can click and rename it like our list name is test all items now it seems more user friendly you can understand directly by reading the name of the action that yeah list name is test and this action is fetching all the items from a list or whatever you would like to name it Uh, now let's say if you want to delete an action what you have to do it click here you can delete it from here something like this now the next option available here is the add a note you can add anything like this on the top of your action something like this you can remove it from here if you would like to uh, provide some note related to that particular action so you can use this so the next thing here is the static result what is static result if you want to disable any action for a while let's say if you are for the testing purpose or for the debugging then you can use static result by using this it will provide the static result for this particular action how you can turn it on click here and 
done. Once you convert any action into the static result preview, then you can see this symbol here and it will provide the static result for this particular row. Let me show you. First delete it. Now let me test it. As you can see, flow runs successfully and the output here is nothing, it's blank. Status OK, header nothing. So this is how you can use the static result. Next is configure run after. This feature of Power Automate is very useful in a lot of complex situations. In Power Automate, you can configure the flow run after configuration handler with four options to choose from. Let me show you. In this case, it is not available because this is directly linked to the trigger. Now, as you can see, uh, we have four options. Is successful, has failed, has skipped, and has timeout. Is success successful if the action runs successfully. Has failed, uh, basically an action has any type of failure exception timeout or anything is skipped actions are skipped either when a condition is not met or when a previous action before that action fails last one has timeout this can happen if the call to the backend times out 120 second or for longer running actions such as approvals after 30 days so this is how you can use let's say uh, we are fetching an item from a SharePoint list and we are passing the ID one and in the list this uh, item is not available with ID one so in case of failure when this particular action fails we are going to send an email to inform that get item has been failed so let's execute it Now as you can see here, not found because there is no item with ID1. Let me check my outlook. Here is the email. Get item has been failed. So this is how you can use the run after handler which is very useful in case of debugging or if you want to send notification in case of any failure occur in your flow. Now the next thing here is in our list is peak code. This option is basically for the developers. Why I'm saying this? Because all the uh, script re related to this particular action is available under this option. You can check behind the scene what is script of that action is executing and how or what are the APIs or the web app web app or web APIs this action is using to fulfill the requirement basically the in-depth understanding of that particular action So this is all for this video. We'll see you in next lesson. If you find it useful, do like and comment. Goodbye and please subscribe the channel.